the stork, Hagar, two wives, doubted the promise. But watch what that brought forth. When Hagar, the second wife of Abraham, which was just absolutely a concubine wife, but she brought forth a man. But what kind of a man was he? The Bible said he was a wild man. He lived by his bow, and no man would conquer him. He was untamable, uncovertable, unregenerated. He could not be tamed. He was a wild man because he was of the contrary to God's word. And anything that's contrary, any preacher, any lay member, any church that's contrary to God's word will bring forth a wild, adulterous branch of worldly Hollywood and cannot stay with the unadulterated word because it's not even included in the promise. No. Sarah, the true wife of the promise, being the tassel, brought forth a gentleman. In the returns, brought forth a promised nation that served God. But Mary, by no sex at all, but believed the promised word when she was a virgin, knowing no man. And the angel of the Lord met her, said, Hail Mary, blessed art thou among the women, for God is with thee. And she said, How will these things be? He, she said, the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. It had been never been done in all the ages, but Mary believed God, and she said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, she believed the word. How is she going to have it? She knew that Hagar had the baby by a sex desire with Abraham, and Sarah had the baby by sex desire with Abraham, children of promise, the bonds woman and the free woman, but here she is asked to believe. That's a contribution to the faith that was in Abraham who believed the impossibles. As long as God said it so, that makes it right. She believed God, never questioned. She said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, no matter how much criticism I have to bear from the world, be it unto me according to thy word, there come forth the genuine seed. Sarah could not do it because it was sex. That's right, and neither could Sarah because it was sex. Neither can the church under sectarianism. It takes a virgin belief in the word of God to make a promise to bring forth children. Sectarianism will never bring forth the reborn church. It cannot do it. It will bring forth a substitutionary something. It will bring forth some something that imitates it, something that tries to be like it. <clears throat> But a genuine born again church of God believes the word of God in the face of anything, regardless of what it is, because it's unadulterated. It's by the promise of God that these things come. Mary, the true one, said, By the out sex said, Bid unto me according to the word, behold the handmaid. And she brought forth, what did she bring forth? Not a wild man, not a nation, but she brought forth the word God himself made manifested in the flesh. Amen. The true seed of God that manifested every promise that God made in the Bible. Without him, no man can live without him. She was a true seed. She was beyond the, uh, she was the shark that brought forth the grain. Now the other two was carriers of life. Only as a natural seed. Mary now, remember, I say the other one, two. Now Mary, don't make her God as some people tries to make her. She was not a God, no sir. She was only a carrier of the seed. Like the rest of them was. Like, but, like faith in the word brings forth more to the real image. Like as a, the corn matures or the wheat, it becomes stock. It comes forth a stock. Then it becomes comes forth the pollen, then it comes forth a shark. But when you think that uh, shark, if you don't watch, it will look exactly just like the real wheat. But when it's opened up, the real wheat is on the inside, it's only a carrier again. So you see Mary, not through sex, but through faith, something exactly like it. Mary was not that seed, Mary was a carrier of the seed. He was a genuine faith seed because the word of God is by faith that he gave to Abraham, and only faith can produce what God said he'll do, faith in his word. Notice how more like the real thing Mary was, but like the shark. The shark hugs the seed in itself and protects it and nurtures it until it's standing alone, niche mature. So has this third churchage of Pentecost matured, holding this grain until it's time to open up the shark. Mary being the mother of Christ, just an incubator. He was no 
blood of Mary. He was no blood of Jew. He was no blood of Gentile. He was the blood of God. God created this blood. It could not be sex. He wasn't Jew nor Gentile. The baby is not one speck of the mother's blood. The blood comes from the father. We know the hemoglobin is in the male. Like a chicken, it can lay an egg. A hen can, but if she hasn't been with a male bird, the rooster, it'll never hatch. It's unfurled, though it looks exactly like a real fertile egg. Every nature of it looks uh, the same, but it hasn't got the life in it. That's the way with people who profess Christ, many of them look like Christians, try to act like Christians, but you've got to have Christ on the inside of you, which is a word made manifest, or it'll never mature into a real Bible-believing Christian. It'll always be a diminution of something. It cannot live because there's no life in it to live. An egg cannot hatch. It rots right in the nest if it hasn't been with the male bird. Just like members of a church, you can baby them and call them, make them deacons and everything else, but there you have a nest full of rotten eggs unless they've meated with the meat. That's right. Carrier, the shark, it an advantage it. That's right. Then it that is the seed itself has to leave the shark or the shark has to leave the seed to get the seed in the presence of the sun so it can be ripening all in a type we see see here how close she the church of these last days gets a to look like the seed itself look how this denomination of pentecost that's raised up in these last days and we'll explain it in a little later on. See how they come so close to looking just exactly like the seed. When a shark comes forth out of a grain of wheat or a blade of wheat after the pollen has fallen in there in the second stage and produced the third stage, which is the shark. And how that, that if you are not a real close observer, you'll never be able to tell, but what's that the real grain of wheat in there when that first little grain comes forth looks like a grain but you sit down and open it up and you'll find out there's no grain there at all it's only a shark a carrier of the grain now the grain comes forth from that but remember there is no more after the sh that shark remember there was no more seed promised through a woman anywhere after mary and there is no more donations promised after pentecost it's a rapture and bread coming forth from there the seed the word made manifest again notice see how close it looks matthew said saint matthew 24 24 said that the two spirits in the last days the church spirit of the church people and the bright spirit of the bright people would be so close together that it will deceive the related if it was possible that's how close look how it's come through the stalk now notice we're going to type something here luther in the church age of bringing forth the bright seed was the same in spirit, just one little grain of seed Luther stood out on that was justification by faith. He was a very type of Hagar the stock. Notice Wesley was type of Sarah, the Philadelphian, the age of love that brought forth the tassel, that in Wesley's age there was more missionaries than any other age we've had, and the great missionary age of John Wesley's time. But Pentecost represented Mary, Mary the last stage of it, how she was not the seed, yet the life of the seed was in her but it hadn't matured yet. I feel very religious. But Mary got the seed. It hadn't matured yet. It was there, but it wasn't matured. So is it with the Pentecostal age that you are living in? There has got to come forth a word of God that in a denomination or outside of the realms of that denomination, Luther went to has with his first word, the just shall live by faith. Wesley had two words, sanctification, second definite work of grace. Pentecost had the third word, the resurrection of the gifts. But the entire seed has to come forth, see how they denominated on one word, and another word, and another word. But there has got to be something that cannot be denominated. It's an entirety of the life that's in there, has to produce itself again on a braid. There cannot be any more church ages after this. We are at the end. Brothers and sisters, we're here. We've arrived. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, we see these things are just as true as they can be. Still, we notice then, if her being the tassel, or Wesley being the tassel, 
after Pentecost to then be, being on the track, which is the next stage of the coming forth of the grain. But brother, sister, the stock is not the grain. Neither is a tassel the grain, neither is a shark the grain. Though each time it matures, it looks more like the grain. The stock don't look like the grain. Then what comes forth? The tassel, a little bulb, it looks more like the grain than the blade does. What comes forth next? The shark. It holds a grain. It nurtures a grain. Now look back there at the promise God made to Abraham of thy seed. Speaking spiritually, any of us know that he was speaking of Christ, not Isaac through his faith seed. Notice the first was by a bonds woman. Didn't look anything like the promise. God don't have to look take back his word for nobody. God said how it would come, and that's the way it will come. But Sarah, being a representative of the church, type of the church, it she found out there that she said, well, I believe this is a little too phenomenal. I just can't even believe in that. So you uh, go get Hagar, and you take her for a wife. See? There. That stalk didn't look like the promise at all. But when Sarah came forth, now that looked pretty good. It looks like a lot more than the promise there. But still, it wasn't the genuine promise because Israel and Isaac failed and denied the genuine seed when it came on. Hallelujah. Don't get excited. Don't run. That would hurt you. Denied the seed, crucified him, and hung him on the cross. Just like Paul said here, did not the seed of the free woman or the bonds woman persecute the seed of the free woman? So does the seed of the denomination persecute the genuine grain? It's always got to be that way. They'll not be heirs together. They are not associated together. They are absolutely two different promises, two different times, two different peoples all together. One is a bride and the other one is a church. No comparison at all with them. But still, they are not the seed that's promised to come. Neither was Sarah, neither was, neither was Hagar, neither was Sarah, or neither was Mary, who was a seed. Mary was not the seed. She was a carrier of the seed, but she had nurtured, brought forth out of her womb, just like the shark brought forth from its womb the real seed, but the shark is not the seed. It only is closer to the seed. It's hugged up around the seed, way back in the stalk the life is scattered all through the stalk and when it comes to the pollen it's gathered cl down closer but when it comes to the shark it's right down there like the seed and it forms it almost like the seed jesus told us what would be in the last day be so close it will deceive the related if, if possible but then the seed comes forth from there and the shark the life leaves the shark and the shark is a carrier and that's just exactly what our denominations has been a carrier luther wesley pentecostals and now it's time for the seed to come forth notice notice just she was not the seed mary was not just a shark tassel and stock carriers of part of the word not all the word luther luther had justification wesley had sanctification pentecostals had the restoration of the gifts but when the word come now they could produce that uh, that justification will save a man. You believe that? Sure, it was a carrier of the word, just the same as I believe the stock is part of the wheat. Sure it is, but it's the carrier, it ain't the life. Then along comes sanctification. How many believe in sanctification? You believe the Bible, you have to, sure. So, still that's not. It's a little more like that's two more words. But then come the Pentecost, the restoration of the gifts, speaking in tongues. They call it the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues there. But they call that the initial evidence, which brought forth the, um, the what? The shark, but they denominated. But when you come to say, I and my father are one, and these things, then the shark pulls away from it. But the real genuine bright church will bring forth the entire word of God in its fullness and in its strength, for he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Notice in the womb of Mary was the seed. But when the seed was delivered, it said, I come to do the will of him that sent me. I and my father are one. If I do not his works, believe me not. There was a seed which 
one or you can condemn me if I believe. What the Bible has promised, I will do. I done it. God has verified that through me. He said, who can tell me now, see? But the seed in Mary, the shark, it was so close to being that, but it wasn't. It was still in the womb. Notice, and in the Pentecostal age, through the Lutheran age, through the Western age, it's been the same thing through this Pentecostal age. Now notice, but the opening of the seven seals, Revelation 10, the full word is to be born into manifestation again and vindicated by the Spirit of God in the full strength as it was when he was here on earth manifested in the same way, doing the same things that it did when it was here on earth. Amen. Hebrews 13, it said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In St. Luke 17, 30, Jesus said, in the last days, as it was in the days of Sodom, when the Son of Man will be revealing himself again, it will be the same thing. The world is in a Sodom condition, but the church has went into Sodom with it, like Lot and his wife. And I see that there is an elected church somewhere in this world that's pulling out and set aside from those things, and the manifestation of God has attracted his attention. We are at the last days. The shark has given forth his strength into the seed. It went on out. It was a good shark, but it served its time. See, it is a word bride of the word groom, the natural seed of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, and or natural seed rather of Ishmael, natural seed of Isaac, and so forth, had to go into the ground in order to bring out this other bring of Jesus. And so has all these others, the seed has to dry. I mean, the sharks has to dry, and the pollen has to dry, and everything dies, so the seed can produce itself that's the way it's been in every age. Denominations has been the carriers of part of it. Part that is a word for it has been hid from the wise reformers or the sealed away from them until the age of the eagles appear. The Bible said so, yes, sir, because we are promised that in Malachi 4, exactly we are. He has hid it from the eyes of the wise and prudent, but we have been just went through the book of the Revelation we find that out that every all three of those messengers of those beasts that went forth each one suited luther just right each one seated the other one just right which is the ox and the different animals of the bible just went forth in justification sanctification even into the pentecostals but the fourth was an eagle that's right and through that age god raised it up so it has to come through that age to be correct yes sir the eagle promise being fulfilled of malachi 4 jesus was not of mary but came through mary like the life through the shark now many of you fine catholic brothers here or sisters tonight maybe think that mary was the mother of god as you say she was how could she be the mother of god and god had no beginning and no end see who was the father of god then if she was a mother see he was her creator and she was not his creator he created himself in the womb of mary not her own creation it was he created himself he was not of her but she was of him that's right the bible teaches us that all things were made by him see and not nothing was made but what was made by him so how could he how would he have a mother when he was god himself now we see here the true revelation of the true type there's three women carriers of a natural seed unto the matured until they matured into Jesus, how Ishmael could not be, because he was born really in what we would think today out of wedlock, because he was a born woman's son. Then come a little more like him, like Jesus, which come out Isaac, but still wasn't because it was born of sex between Sarah and Abraham. But then along come Mary, by the virgin birth, produced Jesus Christ. That's right, God the Word made flesh. Now look, there was three women. There is three women typed here, churches, the women, always types, churches, means three denominational ages, carriers, which almost must die and dry up, just like the shark and so forth does to give room for the seed. The seed cannot get right, cannot get right rather until the shark, stalk and leaves all are all dry. That's right. It saps every bit of the life in them out. Amen. All it was is that plus cannot do it now it's seed time or bright time the sharks are dead the sharks are dried up the virgin word time not touch it's a virgin remember a virgin word time if you'd put it in the hands of our denomination it sure won't be a virgin it will be manhandled 
time you get to it. But God's church is not touched by domination. Hallelujah. It's a virgin born word of God made manifest. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. How wonderful. I love it. I believe it. I know that it's the truth. It will not be touched. There will be no denomination, no manhandling in the virgin birth of the bride. No, sir. She is, she is commanded the God to come out of such. Touch not and clean things become vultures. Just reminds me, as I was coming from Phoenix the other day, coming to Tucson from the meeting, the Spirit of God called my attention to something. As wife and I were going along, talking with the children who were asleep, in the back of the car, getting late, called my attention to a hawk, and I watched that hawk a little bit and studied him, how he's a very type of the church today. Now, the hawk, as we all know, has lost his identification of his original creation. That's exactly right. Once, he was similar to an eagle. He's a greater brother, a hawk was, but now he doesn't fly in the skies no more to hunt his heavenly manner. But he has gotten soft. He don't fly in the skies anymore. He hops on the ground like a vulture, sets upon a telephone post, hops along, hunting dead rabbits. The hawk hasn't, wasn't made to do that. No, he was made to be similar to an eagle. Now, that's just like the church. It was made similar to an eagle. It should take the place in the heavenlies. But instead of that, it's got soft. He don't fly into the unknown no more, into the blue. No, sir, it's depending on its modern ways of adoption of education and theology in some man middle determination looking for a bunch of dead rabbits half rotten that something else had that's right hopping along on the same ground now you see that's right a hawk see what that's what tells the eagle wasn't changed a bit he stays an eagle he doesn't soar into the skies. A hawk doesn't anymore to catch his fresh manna up there. But he depends on what he can find already dead. A hawk doesn't hardly see he's supposed to get on the ground. But what an old hawk today goes down along the road, you see. The telephone wire setting full of hawks. See if he can find something. Something is killed. Some rotten something. He's got... So he hasn't got wings enough to fly. He is the first thing you know. He'll be on the ground altogether, grounded because he's got soft. He don't use his strength no more that God give give him. His special identif uh, special identification was to sail into the skies and watch down from below. But now he gets down below and can't even look up. He's got his mind on the rabbits to find out uh, what he can find on the road. Some skunk or possum. Or something somebody has run over he's not an eagle but he's something like it just like the church depending on its food for education and so forth a dead diet that dies years ago through Luther and Wesley and the Pentecostals and on he ate is looking back for some man-made creed instead of flying up into the heavenlies of the world where all things are possible to them that believe he took up the habits of the buzzard and them dead things was left for the vultures the uh, world educations and so forth like that was left for the world not for the church he's so soft he don't it ain't rugged no more he can't get up into the rugged heavenlies where all things are possible to them that believe he sets back and say well dr so and so said sudden my donation don't even believe it that way oh you perverted hawk afraid to break out upon the promises of god you say well the days of miracles is past you are soft you are scared to take your wings and fly under and have um you come too soft for a prayer meeting have you come to a place that you are scared to stay over 10 minutes at the altar Hop along like a vulture, eating dead, um, a carrion on the ground. Yes, sir. He's too soft to take the rugged beyonds anymore. Hops like a vulture and eats vulture's food. That's what it is. That's right. Until he begins to look like a vulture, he acts like a vulture. He ain't no more a hawk than nothing. He is more like a vulture than he is a hawk. A hawk is supposed to sail, not sit on a telephone pole and watch for a dead rabbit, and then get down there and 
pop up and down the road like a vulture see that's just about the way the church has today what's the use of going up there and sailing around when i can get rabbits here but they are dead they are rotten they are contaminated one time they were good so was the doctrine of the lutheran wesley and the pentecostals why you eat like a vulture there was new manna fell every night out of the heavenlies for the children of israel as they journeyed anything left over was contaminated we used to say in the country got wiggle tails in it there is too many of them wiggle tails in our experiences today our religion depending on what somebody else said what somebody else said and the promise is for some other age a man come to me not long ago a baptist preacher up there in my house and said you know said i just want to correct you on something i said what said you are trying to teach an apostolic doctrine over in this age said the apostolic age ceased i said when see i'll tell you when it begin and you'll tell me when it ceases. i said do you believe the word i said i do i said all right now on the day of pentecost do you believe that's when the apostolic age started he said i do i said then the speaker apostle peter said these words and remember jesus said whosoever shall take one word out of this or add one word to it his part will be taken from the book of life that's a preacher or somebody that's got their name on a book i said peter said repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost for the promises are to you and to your children and to them that's far off even as many as the lord our god shall call when did it go out then it's always been in it's a bunch of hawks that's turned out to be buzzards and hopping around on some dead other dead carcass some other age killed for them right not fresh manna from the heavens anymore they don't want it they ain't they can't have a prayer meeting not egos to begin with soft not rugged just hops around so is a modern denomination depended on education to some man-made theology to explain all these things away and they accept that they won't take the word that said jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever they won't take malachi 4 and he won't take all these other uh, promises pertaining to this day and said how the church age how the prophet said it shall be light in the evening time they don't take this they want to hop around and on what some pentecost organization killed a hundred years ago eating on half rotten manna that's right it's no good notice church is so carnal feeds itself on worldly acarion dead things of the world just like the vulture does church politics they don't let the holy ghost send a man to a church they have to have a politics and see if the denomination is going to receive him or not that's right they are like the world they dress like the world they look like the world they act like the world they are vultures like the world they are lazy soft compromisers that's all there is to it did you ever see an eagle compromise a no sir there is no compromising in him neither does a genuine christian he ain't soft he'll hunt till he finds it amen yes sir he'll find his meat he wants fresh manna he'll get down there and dig till he finds it he'll fly higher and higher if there's none in this valley he'll raise a little higher the higher you go the more you see can't see so it's time for eagles of this day to get to flying higher dig into god's premises not live on vulture food that's been killed years ago get out of it politics voting in and voting out saying this that and the other and the holy spirit has no more right of way in the church than nothing no more prayer meetings no more agonizing with god to fulfill his word no more believing that the word is still the same message to end forever they just vulture is down what a denomination put their name on the book and got lazy and soft and sets back they are gloating on some kind of a dead carrion and then supposed to be at least a hawk that's a similar brother to the eagle the prophet that brought the true word and manifested it relies on half rotten man-made theology where does he get it at in some man-made sunday school program sheet some educator killed for him back in some seminary tell him that the days of miracles is past 
there was no such a thing as baptism of the Holy Ghost. All this is nonsense. You mean to tell me that an eagle would eat that? He couldn't do it. No, sir. Neither will a Christian eat on that uh, dead carrion from the old denominational doctrines and things. They want the word of God fresh. The promise of the hour. God promised rabbits in the days of Luther. He promised other things in the days of others. But now he promised us a full square meal. The full seven horse menu for all the seven seals are open and everything is ready for the word of God to those who can receive. Hawks. Hopping like buzzards, oh my, think of it. How critical. Why the hour is. Just as a hawk has long lost his identification as a hawk so has a church lost long lost her identification as a lesser bird brother of the eagle god's prophets once the carrier of a true word justification then become a carrier of sanctification then become a carrier of the baptism of the holy spirit restoration of the gifts but then when he goes on and keeps going back try to eat something Mana from another day, it's rotten, it's no good. A genuine eagle of this day knows that was all right, but we got that plus until Jesus Christ is made manifest in the fullness of his power as he promised to be in this last day. She is now a dry shark, it's past the spirit of God passed through her, is true, and will not, she will not be heir with the vindicated seed word she sure will not be she'll not be in the rapture she'll be a church member may come up in the second resurrection be judged according to what she's had if you're here tonight and just a church member what's your judgment going to be when we all have to stand there and witness you had the truth see she no more flies into the blue into the unknown and the supernatural where the powers and heights and the promise of God, eternal word is made possible, all things to them that believe. She won't believe that. She said she falls right back on the telephone wire and said, My denomination says the rabbits is alright. Though they got maggots in them, but yet they're alright, see? She depends on that. Pentecost is like her denomination of vulture sisters, setting now in large council seats of the ungodly suddenly is listening to her worldly politic heads feeding on her vulture food of dead rabbits of something that passed by 50 years ago that's a condition of the pentecostal church oh my just as sarah tried to bring the promise of the supernatural by a hand-picked hagar so has the church trying to bring a revival of great evangelists across the country today a revival in our time a revival in our time all the methodist baptist pentecostals all get together how can you have a revival of fresh manner on an old dead vultured food how can you have it revival in our time the revival will be so small they'll never know it ever happened pentecostal said oh there's going to be a great thing happen it's happening and they don't know it see that's it see yes sir for where the carcass is there the eagles will be gathered just as sure as the world see that's what it said what is the carcass? The word. He is the word, the carcass Christ. Christ in you, the same message to end forever. How true it is. Sarah trying to get the promises all fulfilled, you see, in a great, like the church today, a great revival in our time. By what? By a perverted promise. How are you going to do it? When God never did bless an organization, He never did use an organization. When a message joined forth, and they organized it died right there i challenge any historian to show me where it ever raised again he died right there and said right there god just moved right out of that career into another one right out of the lutheran into the methodist right out of the methodist into the pentecostals and now he's moved right out of the pentecostals into the seed because it has to be the seed you can't beat nature there is no nothing else there for it to happen but the seed so the seed will produce itself he is the same yesterday today and forever the same pillar of fire showing the same signs the same power the same god the same miracles the same thing 
we indicated this word and the Bible just exactly. He's a semester to end forever. He's leading tonight. God help us to see it and believe it. Sure, see, Sarah, the church, hand-picked Hagar, didn't, it didn't work, did it? No, her hand-picked group didn't, won't work today either. Doctors and PhDs and LLDs don't do it. All the careers fail. Luther fail, as Hagar did. What did Hagar do? Hagar gave her son to another woman, Bosom. That's right, to raise her child. Hagar did that and gave her son, her only son, to another woman's bosom, not his mother, to raise it. That's the same thing Luther did when he gave his son justification over to a denomination to fool with. That's exactly to raise him up. Wesley failed the same way as Sarah did, doubting the supernatural birth, being the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As Sarah did at the oak tree, when Wesley was introduced to the supernatural, when their Pentecostal age came on, and Wesley was introduced to speaking in tongues and all this, they laughed and made fun of it, all of you, Church of Christ, and you so-called, and you Baptists and Presbyterians, every one of you turned your nose up on it and went away from it, right? What you do, Wesley, you sold your child into an organization and he died and perished. That's exactly right. But the word, the true word went right on. It don't, didn't stay in that organization. It moved right on into Pentecost and took some more with it. It was a more matured son, like the seed that fell in the womb. And after a while, he started in the backbone, then to have lungs and had head and feet. But after a while, it came to a place that it was born. That's right. So, so that's how the church has matured the same way. Wesley doubted just exactly like Sarah did at the tree. She said, when the angel of the Lord, a man dressed like a, or an angel of God, it was himself, Elohim, dressed like a man, stood there with the dust on his clothes and said that he had given the promise after Sarah was 90 years old and Abraham 100. And Sarah laughed up her sleeve and said, How could this be? When Abraham and I haven't had a well be, haven't been a, as a young people, family relationship, maybe for 20 years, she was nearly 100 years old, said me, have pleasure with my Lord, me old and him old too, and his stream of life is dead and my womb is dried up, my breast is gone, the milk veins are gone. How could I have it? God said, I've promised it, he is coming anyhow. So did Wesley, how can we accept them speaking in tongues and divine healing and stuff? It's not for this day. God said, I promised in the last days of power to my spirit upon all flesh. He promised to do it and he went um on and done it anyhow and the wesleyan church with all of his little Polish sisters of baptist presbyterians and church of christ and nazarenes pilgrim holiness and united the brethren uh, and what for died right with it and the church moved on now what did pentecost do organizes just like the shark is done the same thing it organized itself together said itself in as a truck that's right pentecost was a mary pentecost feast look what mary did what did mary uh, do wrong at a pentecostal feast one time she was faced with a bunch of dignitaries priests when her son she couldn't find him anywhere and she went back three days journey she had left him like the modern church today about three times five and twenty five had the church left about 50 years ago or 75 left him at the pentecostal feast mary went back up with joseph three days looking for him she had been looking for him she couldn't find him she found him what did she find she found him in the temple discussing the word of god with the priests and right in the front of those priests those dignified mary let the curtain drop she did exactly the same thing she should not have done called her god the mother of god her mother ought to have more wisdom than her son and she said your mother and i have sought you with tears for day and night her huh? your father and i claiming that the birth was supernatural that joseph was the father of jesus she denied the supernatural birth pentecost took speaking in tongues they denied the birth of the word that's exactly what it did it'll take so much of it but won't take the rest of it it denied the birth of the word just like mary did but watch there will not be any more organizations after this watch the word itself yet 12 years old just a 
little bitty thing back in the shack, he said, Don't you know I must be about my father's business? The word corrected the church right there. What are you doing after all these things for? You know you can't do this. We'll close up our doors. We won't let you come in. For know ye not that I must be about my father's business. See, sure, sure. The true supernatural charmed. She just claimed him to be Joseph's son, a mere man, or what uh, Pentecost did, just claimed him to be one of three. Whew. I know that had one of three, but he was all three in one. He wasn't one of three, but the Pentecostal, oh yes, he is the son of the father of the Holy Ghost, then oh my. But the real true word speaks right out and said, there are not three of them, there is one of them. Amen. You know not the word of God. Make it not three of them, but one. Notice there will be no more career, mother churches, denominations after this career shark, because after the shark, there is no more, nothing left by then. Uh, by then, but just the grain. Is that right? It's got to be the grain. It's got to be the same kind that went into the ground. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, as Spirit come upon the bride to do the same things that He did, seeing. It's a reproducing again of the green. The word yet young speak for itself and know not that I must be of my father's business, huh? There is a secret of the message now, just exactly the father's business. What is the father's business? Would you think of what the father's business was in him to fulfill what Isaiah said? A virgin shall conceive, fulfill what? Isaiah said again, the lame shall look like a heart. And all these things will take place. Like Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet among you like unto me. It was the Father's business to fulfill that word. Well, if that come down through them stocks of them natural women, what about these stocks of these spiritual church women? Churches means women. Women means churches. Rather, is that right? Then what is it now? We must be about the Father's business. The wheat could would cry back the grain. Yes, sir. What must he do? Vindicate Malachi 4. Vindicate Luke 17.30. Vindicate Hebrews 13.8. Vindicate St. John 14.12. Vindicate all of his word. Vindicate Hebrews. I mean the revelation, the 10th chapter of the opening of the seven seals and the mysteries of God even to the serpent seed and all be manifested, marriage and divorce and all these other mysteries that's been hid under the pillars for all these years from the theologians and so forth. But it's now the hour and that's the father's business think they will receive it they want to be dignified and say oh our generation don't teach us that but the bible does that's right god vindicates it to be true sure it is fulfilling his this age when the seven seals or just proving the denominations has just been carriers that's another one of father's business to prove and the father's business now is to show you that them denominations is not his they are man-made systems that deny the word right notice you say well mary the great virgin at the cross he never called her mother he called her woman carrier not mother see true she was a carrier of the word but she was not the word he was the word oh yes notice also she was not identified in the resurrection with him he died and was again because he was a word she was just a carrier she died and still in the grave that's right so she was just a carrier not his mother not god she was just a carrier like the churches are that's right shows she was just a carrier not the word let's close by saying this oh pentecostal hawks hopping around like vultures partaking of the world just like the rest of them does having a form of godliness enough to deceive the very elected if possible but denying the word power thereof and says the prophet here a perfect example of what god said it would be in the last days i'll let see a church age naked blind miserable poor wretched and don't know it claiming that she is big and wealthy and has need of nothing and don't know that she has changed from a hawk uh, a sim similar brother to a prophet to keep the word of god straight she turned to a vulture and feeding her people on dead ecclesiastical rabbits that's exactly right wake up my whew what do you expect to be identified or heirs with the eagles when such things as this in this great hour 
when the rapture is at hand, oh Christian, oh believer, if you've been a partial believer, keep on attending the meetings for just a little while, will you? We got something here that I believe the Lord wants you to know. It's late. I can't go any further. I got to close and maybe finish tomorrow night. But look, let us bow our heads just a moment. I don't want to be uh, noticed what grammar I use. But I want you to take a heed just a minute to what I said. It's clear enough. You could understand it, I'm sure. If you desire to, if you are here tonight and you're without this experience, I don't say you say. I've danced in spirit, jump all around. Yeah, hawks do the same thing. Just like the crows and the vultures. I'm not asking that. What are you eating on? Where are you uh, getting your daily diet? Where are you feeding from the word of God? Or some old acarion that's been used back yonder years and years ago. In Is your experience even tonight with something that you picked up many years ago? Or is it fresh, uh, new tonight, new manner? that's just fell from heaven and are you feeding a soul on it looking tomorrow for something good and better if you're not that way now with your heads bowed and your eyes closed and your hearts bowed ask yourself this is your question and not to me but to god would you raise your hand in a testimony of saying this god condition my soul and my spirit that i can feed only on the word of god would you raise your hand and say god bless you god bless you I don't know just exactly how many is in here there is tonight. I'm a very poor judge of that crowd, but I'd say at least a third or more raise their hands that they want uh, conditioned souls. Let us remember in prayer now as we bow our heads, dear God, I'm only responsible for saying the word, and by these little simple parables, little types, the people see that one is not going to be air with the other and we know that it's in the last days there's going to be people that's going to be raptured up into the heavens and some of them will be here when jesus comes and we're looking for him to come even tonight and i'm thinking of 30 about 30 or 33 years ago knelt here maybe this time of night along 9 30 or 10 o'clock praying for our father that was lost tonight lord i'm praying for many fathers many mothers and brothers and sisters won't you have mercy dear god it's too late now for my father to do anything about it he's passed beyond the boundaries of his life and soon lord we're all going to pass that way i too must go that way every man and woman boy or girl in here has to go that way but we will be accountable for what we do without of god how little did that man seem in the sight of David when he was spitting upon him? How little will those people think that spit upon Jesus the word when he returns again? And those that pierced him, how little will the people feel who could walk away from here and see even, not only in some great Greek words and so forth, but in plain nature that teaches us God the Creator can see the carriers of the word and see the word itself and know the hour we are living the harvest time is here dear god let us not turn our back upon it for some folly of the world but let us tonight receive him with all of our heart lord create in me a good spirit the spirit of life that i might believe all thy words and accept jesus the word the same mystery to end forever and believe today on the portion that's lorded to this age granted lord i ask it in jesus name and now I'm going to ask each one of you, as you're here and thinking of this, uh, real sincerely. We don't have a church for you to join. We have a pool there to be baptized in. As many as I believed was baptized. If you've never been baptized yet by Christian baptism, that don't mean sprinkling, pouring. That by means by immersing. Not in a title of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the entire church was baptized until the Catholic Church in um, 303 introduced three gods and three forms of baptism in our Trinity titles. If you haven't had that yet, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, there is robes and things waiting for you down there. Won't you come and join with us, Jesus Christ, not with us. We don't have a church even here to take care of you. Go to any church you want to wherever you come from but please believe this word do you believe it say amen congregation says amen god bless you may you do 
there's anything we can help you we're here to um, do it now i know there's a uh, sick here our time has got away from us tonight for a prayer line maybe we'll get it though i want each one of you do something for me you are sitting close to somebody lay your hands over on that person and no doubt you are putting your hand upon an eagle maybe an eagle that been eating some vulture food somewhere gotten sick uh, of it they don't want it no more they want to come out of it they are sick and tired of it but here tonight and see what eagles really can eat the word and have a living christ living among them showing himself alive the same yesterday today and forever they don't want to be heirs with the sharks they are to be burned and all the straws and things is to be burned the combine is coming to beat the wheat you want to be the wheat there is some of them that sick some of them physically sick i want you to pray eagle pray for your brother sister eagle there as i pray for you here may the spirit of god come upon you remember i'm giving you the food of the eagle the promise of god he calls his prophets eagles he calls himself a eagle he is jehovah eagle and while you have your hands laid upon one another pray for them our heavenly father your word said the last commission you give to your church was go to other world and preach a good gospel the general orders he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils speak with they shall speak with uh, new tongues if they should drink any deadly thing it wouldn't hurt them if they take up serpents they shall not harm them and if they lay their hands on the sick they shall recover O jehovah eagle feed your little ones tonight upon thy that word lord they are needy that's the diet they need that's what they need to know what the food is what thus saith the lord is he promised if they laid their hands on this one another that they would recover O lord god take all doubts and vultures ideas away from us now and we feed solemnly upon the eagle food of the word of god let every unclean spirit that's in these people every spirit of doubting every spirit of fear every denomination of cling every habit every sickness every disease that's among the people live in the name of jesus christ may it come out of these people group of people and may they be free from this hour on that they can eat the eagle food that we are believing you send us through the week lord breaking open the, those seals and showing us those mysteries has been hid since the foundation of the world as you've promised they are yours father in the name of jesus christ amen all that believe that and accept that stand to your feet say i believe i accept that's what god promised me i receive condition raises with a voice of acceptance the lord bless you that's wonderful every person standing that's good accord i love him let's sing that hymn to him then i love him i love him because he first loved me all together now i love him i love him if you do just raise up let's raise our hands i love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on calvary stream oh isn't he wonderful when he says amen let's shake hands with one another brother eagle just turn around sister shake hands as we sing it i love him brother eagle brother eagle brother eagle measuring the word charlie how are you god bless you brother glad to see you god bless you brother god bless you brother eagle god bless you on calvary street let's just raise our hands to him i love him i love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on calvary stream how will you know how will you know that you love jesus when you we love one another that's how the world see god sees your faith the world sees your actions love one another now be kind to one another talk with one another be patient with one another and any further instructions we can give baptism seek in the holy ghost we don't have any rooms here to do that in you understand the altar call if god has convinced you 
that this is right, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you want to join with him, go and be baptized in his name tomorrow. There will be men there to instruct you anything that we can do to help you. We'll do it. I love him. I love him. Even the telephones now, Tucson, Auburn, California, way up in the east, raise your hands, way out in the praise him, purchase my salvation. Who's going to dismiss? Turn it to Brother Neville. Now until tomorrow night, I give you Brother Neville, our pastor.